Um, I'm the director for the Postgraduate Certificate in Professional Practice and Leadership, which I shall from now on call the PPL um, because it's less of a mouthful for me. Um, and the first thing to say is thank you very much um, for being here and welcome. Um, I'm very excited about this course and I think my colleagues um, are very excited about this course too. So it's lovely to have the opportunity to talk about it in concrete with people who might actually take the course um, for the first time. So thanks very much for that. Um, the idea of today is um, to give you enough information and answer your questions so you can make an informed choice about whether you want to take the course or not. Um, and with that in mind, um, we've come up with um, a fairly short PowerPoint. Um, the idea being that we answer your questions before you even ask them. Um, so I'll run through this PowerPoint um, now. And then at the end, we have, of course, time for questions that we haven't even thought about. Um, so. To start very broadly um, in the aims and objectives of the course, um, we see this course as very innovative um, and distinct. And part of the reason of that is that higher education itself is very distinct. We all know that um, because we're all operating within it. Um, so the first thing to do is to explore um, the higher education landscape and operations and um, to understand how perhaps it's different um, the, than other environments that people work in. And um, by doing that, we want to develop a holistic understanding of what it is to be a professional within this very distinct um, landscape. Um, we want to enhance reflective leadership capacities. Um, and very important throughout all of this is using evidence, um, evidence to inform decision making within um, higher education. Um, once again, very, very broadly, um, the programme takes part from October to May. Um, there's two semesters and the semesters mirror each other. Um, so at the start of each semester, we have three days on campus. And um, the idea um, being to have an immersive on campus um, environment where we get to know each other um, and we really delve into these topics um, before the modules start. Um, there's 30 credits in total and um, these are 15 credits per semester um, and in each semester there's a 10 credit module and a five credit module that run simultaneously. So in the first semester that's the higher education landscape and um, which is 10 credits and that runs alongside um, understanding, navigating and implementing change. Um, we have our three on-campus days um, from the 12th to the 14th of October. And then in semester two, you've got this mirroring again with three on-campus days um, and then a 10 credit module on reflective leadership and practices where you'll see me a little bit more. Um, and running simultaneously to that, you have a five credit um, module on innovative practices in higher education. Um, just given a very quick overview of the course, I thought it might be nice to learn a little bit more about um, the lecturers on the course. Um, so I'll start with myself and then I might hand on to my colleagues that are on the call um, that will tell you a little bit about themselves. Um, so you'll see my picture there. Um, it's a little bit more fresh faced um, than I currently am. Um, this was pre-COVID when I gave myself some nice wrinkles. Um, so I'm a um, college lecturer in Circle um, and I'm also lecturer in um, philosophy. In Circle, I'm um, as well as being part of this course, um, I'm developing a course on inclusive academic practice. Um, I'm part of this course and um, I'm part of developing um, a course on um, academic integrity. And um, when it comes to my research and my teaching, um, I'm very passionate about inclusion. Um, and this is part of what makes me very passionate about being part of this course too. I genuinely believe um, that the more voices and the more voices from different sectors, um, the better we can be. And that's in um, higher education too. And that we need a place where everyone um, can speak and everyone listens to each other. And that's what makes me really excited about this course. Um, 
I am the director of this programme, so um, you'll see me and Thomas Garvin um, talking about um, leadership in the second semester, but you'll also actually see me along the whole course. Um, so, for example, um, I'll be moderating the discussions forum. Um, if you have a question or a query, um, it's possibly me you'll come to first. Um, and I also really love the idea of learning alongside you. And um, so there are aspects of this course because it's so broad that um, I don't have any expertise in. So I'll be sitting with you um, within um, the course as it goes. And with that, I think I'll hand on to perhaps Catherine, if you'd like to um, start first. So hi, everyone. It's so, so lovely to finally connect with you. I'm the director, the administrative director of our Centre for the Integration of Research, Teaching and Learning. And I'll be connecting with Thomas and Katie in the second semester, but similarly have been part of kind of the programme development team and have been really, um, I suppose, excited to engage with my, my colleagues across the who you're seeing here reflected in the photographs. Um, what I'm excited about in the course is this kind of the stuff that I would have liked <laughs> early on or even currently in my kind of career with UCC and working in higher ed, I've worked across the sector and, and, and locally within UCC since 2015. I think it's just there's key insights, understandings, and it kind of stretches us to connect what we do in a, on a day-to-day -day basis to a broader picture. And I think it'll be enjoyable for everybody. So thank you. And I'm looking forward to connecting with you. Um, perhaps I see Anne, would you like to go next? Thanks, Katie. So um, just to, uh, I suppose, reiterate what Catherine has said, this has been a long time in the making. Um, it's been a very interesting uh, journey, I suppose, so far in terms of my own background. Um, I work in staff wellbeing and development in UCC. I've worked in the university since the year 2000, and I suppose I have a great interest in institutional change in the higher education and university sectors and how it is changing and how it, I suppose, government would um, intend that it continues to change. I'm also very conscious of, you know, the role that each of us plays and how various stakeholders, both within and external to the university, would have different views or, or expectations around, I suppose, what the university is there for. Um, uh, I did research myself between uh, on the university sector in Ireland between 2008 and 2014, and I'm very keen, I suppose, to explore further um, with the group looking at the, you know, the higher education context around, I suppose, this whole question of what the university is there to do, um, what the various, um, I suppose, uh, stakeholders within the institutional field have um, at their expectations in relation to and just to seeing this unique um, programme, I suppose, develop and uh, progress over the years and in the coming years. Thanks very much, Katie. Um, thanks very much, Anne. Um, Michelle, I can see you there. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Katie. Uh, hi, everyone. So I will be um, the module coordinator on the Innovative Practices in Higher Education module, and that's really taking the building on the context of higher education that Anne and Elizabeth will be introducing you to in semester one, and also um, a, an introduction and overview of change management and putting those elements into practice through case studies. So we'll have a number of, of speakers talking about their experience of innovation in higher education and lessons learned along the way and using a kind of an innovation toolkit to apply to your own practice. And I suppose key is we'll be choosing a number of key themes that are relevant regardless of where your current role is. Um, but really the networking piece here is also going to be really important because there'll be a, a lot of peer learning on what goes on um, across the institution. And it's all done in the context of higher education, which again builds on the uniqueness of the programme. So while there'll be some elements of operations management, um, it's really all put in the context of the higher education funding model and how things work within a university culture. And our guest speakers will be including those points along the way as well. 
Um, so it's it's quite a practical module, but it really builds on the modules in, in semester one and putting both your own reflections on your own areas of work, but also listening to then other um, other colleagues from the higher education sector in Ireland and uh, things they have put into practice and what they would have done differently. Bad, thanks, Michelle. Um, Patrice, are you online? No. Um, so unfortunately, I think. Sorry, have... I'm, oh yeah, you yeah, are. Okay. I'm here, Casey. Can you hear me? I can. I can, and oh, I can yeah. see you too. Sorry. Thank you. I was on mute there for a moment. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Patrice Cooper. I'm a lecturer in management in the Department of Management and Marketing. Um, I've been in UCC since the early 90s, so um, I've certainly witnessed a lot of change across all of those years. Um, ordinarily, I teach strategy, leadership and change management um, to undergrads, postgrads and post experience. Um, my research interests are primarily in the area of leadership. Um, I'm particularly interested in um, transitions, uh, role transitions and identity change. Um, and I can see um, how those interests would tie in with um, the aims and objectives of this programme. Um, I'll be with you in the first semester delivering the module on understanding, navigating and implementing change. And I'll basically be looking at, um, you know, initially understanding the nature of change, what triggers change, trying to apply that to your own higher education context. I'll be looking at different approaches to change, planned approaches, emergent approaches, contingency approaches. Um, I'll be spending quite a bit of time on what I would call the human um, elements of change, like resistance to change, dealing with conflict. Um, similar to Anne, I'll be looking at uh, stakeholder analysis and stakeholder engagement. Um, and I'll also be looking at communicating change and uh, the whole leadership change leading the change and leading the transition, which are actually two quite different things. Um, in terms of assessment, then we will be doing a group case study, which will basically be an application of the theoretical frameworks that you've learned to your own situation in a group context. And then you'll also have the opportunity um, to do an individual reflective piece. Um, so, you know, I hope you'll find this an interesting module. I've been teaching change management for many, many years and kind of gathered a lot of material along the way. So um, I hope to bring a lot of of that to you uh, to to make what you will of it in your own particular context. So looking forward to meeting some of you anyway, or all of you, hopefully um, in the next month or so. Thanks. Thanks, Patrice. Um, unfortunately, we have um, some absences. So um, Thomas and Elizabeth aren't with us. Um, and it is unfortunate because um, they are so knowledgeable in their particular areas. Um, and that's one thing that I'm really excited about in this course myself is the learning. Um, and I think one of the things that came through there from um, talking to my colleagues um, is the mixture of um, the theory and the practice, the use of data and the use of science, but also um, the acknowledgement of expertise that you have as practitioners. And um, I think that's really um, innovative and interesting within this course. Um, but moving on through this PowerPoint, and then we'll get to your questions. Um, so Patrice talked a little bit about assessment there, um, and I'm not going to run through the assessment of um, each of the um, modules, um, but it's um, just to draw your attention to um, the fact that the 10 credit modules um, have 200 marks associated with them, and the five credit modules have 100 marks associated with them. Um, I will make these PowerPoint slides available to you, so um, I'm not just rushing through it and just um, showing you the, the assessment as the scary bit and then running on to the, the rest of the slides. Um, but if we talk a little bit about the teaching approach, um, 
I guess the word um, I'd used to describe it as hybrid. Um, so there's a little bit of a mixture of everything and um, different ways of engaging with the material and different um, methods of um, showing the material. So um, we have asynchronous um, parts of the course um, and that's not just you reading papers. There is a bit of that. Um, but we've had in mind that to have different ways of engagement. So there's videos, um, et cetera, um, on the course. Um, there's synchronous parts of the course. Um, I'll get onto that um, in a minute. Um, but on Wednesdays, there'll be um, hours 2, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, where there'll be um, a synchronous part of the course. Um, you'll have lectures and um, a chance to um, get together with your peers as well. Um, there's a campus element of this, as I said, so those three um, days all together. And if I run on now and show you what a week might look like, I think that might be helpful to know what it might look like um, concretely. Um, so, for example, you might have um, on Monday a review and engage um, opportunity. So um, Monday um, content might come on Canvas and new content for the week ahead. Um, but there will also be a, a time to look back at the week um, that has gone um, behind you. Right. Um, so um, the content will come and you'll have the Monday to think about um, what has happened in the week prior and what's going to happen this week. On Tuesdays, um, there might be a discussion um, board time. Um, as I said, I'll be on those discussion boards, so you'll be able to um, meet with me. Um, perhaps the expectation would be that there is a discussion prompt, um, maybe a question that's come up from um, the prior week. And you might be expected to um, contribute one um, discussion um, piece to that. Um, and you might also be expected to respond to two of your peers' um, discussion piece. On Wednesday, as I said, we have this synchronous um, piece of the course, which happens from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, these will be interactive sessions um, connecting learning and practice. So this idea of the theory, but also um, acknowledging the practice aspect and the practical aspect of this course. On Thursdays, we'll have um, virtual office hours or drop in hours, and these are not obligatory. Um, I will be running these and um, the idea being if you have any questions or you want to talk about something, perhaps you're thinking more into the future about your um, assessment piece and you're interested in pursuing a particular area, all of those ideas. It's just an hour put away for your use, however um, you want to use it. And then on Friday, um, you might have a reflective um, piece to um, be involved in. So going on to the FAQs, we did re receive some questions. So um, we're going to preempt these questions um, coming up afterwards by addressing them now. Um, so who should do this course? And this is the piece that once again, I'm going to say I'm really excited about. My answer is everyone. Um, so any professional working in administrative or academic role in um, higher education. Um, it's open to all the aspects of the university. It's open to the teachers of the university, the lecturers of the university, the administrative staff of the university, the managers of the university. And I think that space of having all of those people is, is a very exciting space to be. Um, so it's for those interested in formalizing um, their experience and um, developing their leadership potential. Um, it's for those interested in change and innovation, as you've heard from my colleagues, um, and it's for those employees that um, want to reflect on um, culture and leadership. Um, what will I get from this course? Um, at a minimum, really, um, you'll get a professional qualification and um, they're always helpful and um, they look good on CVs and um, they look good on um, thinking about your career trajectory. Um, more than that, though, and much more, I think, um, you'll have an opportunity for networking and um, networking in a very distinct area and in a very, very innovative area, I think. And um, there will be opportunities for peer learning and um, 
And I think understanding uh, your role within the higher education landscape, given what we've talked about, about higher education being such a distinct place and changing um, all the time, then understanding that role, I think, is it, having an opportunity to think and discuss and reflect on that role is very important. Um, you'll have an opportunity to practice um, and um, develop the kind of know-how to make informed decisions. Um, so there's a real um, focus on using the science in a practical sense. Um, and there'll be an opportunity to really understand data and how to use data and actually the sorts of data that you already have access to that can be used um, to make decisions. Um, and then, of course, there's release, releasing leadership potential. That's a real plus of this course, I think. And um, the idea that throughout the university, in every um, chair within the university, there is the potential for leadership and understanding where that potential is and how to unlock it. So how much time will this course take? Um, we've talked about this at length, I think. Um, we're very cognizant of the fact um, that time is a real resource, um, especially if you're doing a full-time or part-time job. Um, I can tell you at the minimum how much time this will take. Um, so if you think about the practicalities of the course, you'll have these three campus days. Um, you'll have two hour synchronous sessions per week. Um, you'll have an optional one hour per week, and then you'll have required readings. Um, we have thought about these in terms of um, how much time you will have. Um, because we're so cognizant of this, um, we're going to use every opportunity we can to help you be strategic about your time and about your learning and um, to understand um, when you're going to do the minimum required, because it's um, perhaps not, not something you want to focus on for either your assessment or it's not something particularly helpful for your role, but also knowing that there are going to be aspects of the course that you're going to want to focus on um, and actually might be really relevant to your role and to understand that when that opportunity arises, um, you can do as much as you want. Um, there's an absolute no ceiling. Um, so if you want to really, really do that, and we will provide all the resources necessary and all the help necessary to um, really be able to do that. Um, what will this course cost? Um, so for UCC colleagues, um, the cost is 1,000 um, euro. Um, if you're not a UCC colleague, um, the cost is 3,000 um, euro. We have had some questions about why. Um, so this has to do with um, the fact that it is the model for CPD um, to charge for accredited courses. And this is really important to, um, I suppose, assure the longevity of the course going forward. Um, it's important to note that you might be eligible for a fee waiver and actually addressing that eligibility um, and going to your line manager to discuss this is actually a really positive part of this course. Um, it encourages your line manager to um, support you really in that, um, not just financially, but also to understand that there is a time release aspect to this too. So um, as part of the eligibility, we talk about having access to data. And um, this is a really important part of this course. Um, and I'm sure this has come through um, from this PowerPoint, this kind of um, contribution of data and theory in order to really help um, in a practical job um, for decision making. So um, it's good to know what counts as data. And um, when it comes to the on-campus days, we will have um, a couple of hours actually signposted for talking about what counts as data. Um, but for a really quick overview of this, so um, you know what we're talking about. And um, basically data in this um, circumstance refers to existing data. We're not going to be asking you to collect data unless that data is coming to you um, anyway, right? Um, so when we're talking about data, we're talking about anything really that will inform um, or understanding of higher education. Um, it's almost easier to give examples to kind of show you what we mean. Um, so for example, you might have information um, about the number of FTE students who take a particular course over a number of years. That's really interesting data. Um, or for example, you might have data on the career outcomes of students. Um, you could use that data in a number of, of ways. 
Um, you might have um, data on the number of students accessing particular services. Um, these would be quantitative data that we've talked about so far, um, but also there's the opportunity to use what we call qualitative data. Um, so you might have access to um, document analysis, for example, on health and safety reports. Um, we will go through all of this as part of the course with you. Um, and it's important to say that um, any data you use has to comply with the policy on ethical use of data. Um, but as I said, um, this is something that you will get throughout the course. Um, so with that in mind, um, unless any of my colleagues want to um, contribute further, I think it's time to open up to your questions and comments. 